Hey everyone, Yan Zhao here again. Today, Wizards of the Coast, they released class feature variants uh, for their Unearthed Arcana. So this is basically updating all the classes in a big 13 page PDF. We will go through all of them probably in two videos just for the simple fact that Dang, this is going to be long. It usually takes me like 20 minutes to go through three pages, so we'll probably split it up into two. Just to start out, um, I have read over this a bit, and overall, some of the updates seem pretty interesting. Some of them are kind of eh, but I have two main problems with this update before we go on to talk about the awesomeness. Number one is, do you need to buy like a new player's handbook? Is that Wizard of the Coast plan? Are they going to come out with a new PHB next month? I'm just a little dubious because it used to be you had a handbook and you needed a monster manual and you were pretty much ready to go. Now, if someone only has the handbook, but somebody else wants to use all these advanced features, like how do you make that work? You sort of need all the materials together. Also, not a Wizards of the Coast issue, but I'm very curious to see what D&D Beyond does with this, since a lot of people are really using that to keep track of things now. I do it too, just a simple fact that when I'm playing as a character, as opposed to DMing, I often miss all sorts of updates or not updates but you know you get a an extra skill from this or whatever from that uh, i screw that up all the time and my characters end up poor for it so i just started creating everything in dnd beyond and just updating things there even though i do prefer to write things out all right problem number two now this problem is not a unique problem to Dungeons and Dragons. The first time I noticed it was back probably in either the mid 90s or the early 2000s in fighting games. So in video game fighting games you had like Street Fighter, Mortal Kombat. Each character sort of had their own specialty and then there were maybe like two that would be middle of the road and everything. So if we're talking Street Fighter. Ken and Ryu were in the middle of the road. Uh, then you had others. Some would have similar but uh, differing attacks. So, for example, uh, Blanca and Dalsum had that uh, shooting across the screen as electricity or fireball thing. Uh, Chun Li only had up close fighting, but she was super awesome with the kicks. Um, Guile was a little bit similar, but he had that. Um, sonic boom so what happened as you got into progressive versions is that everybody had some kind of a fireball then everybody had more up close kicks and fighting and it sort of evened out all the characters which sucked because part of the fun of the original was look i like this kind of play i'm going to double down on this and I want somebody who's all in. Or you could be milk toast, and you could go for the Ken or Ryu, where they have a little bit of everything, but they're not necessarily the best of all of them. In this new update, part of the problem is now all the classes that didn't have a heal or a way to get hit points back or maybe increase hit points, or if they did, it was very limited, now they have more. And so it's to the point like, do you need a healer? Do you need a healing class? And in some ways, maybe that's a good thing because you've got it, you know, it'll take pressure off a cleric. Now, if you're um, like a storm cleric or something, you don't feel that extra pressure to heal and res everybody. 
you can just go kick the crap out of everything. But, we will see. Alright, so, getting to it. Class feature variants. All classes. The following variant is available to every class in the game. Proficiency, versatility. Whenever you gain the ability score improvement feature for your class, uh, so as it says here, fourth level and higher, I think everybody levels up at level four. Improvement feature, you also replace one of your skill proficiencies with a skill proficiency offered by your class at level one. The proficiency you replace needn't be from the class. Now that's a little strangely worded. Uh, just for the simple fact that you replace a proficiency offered by your class. Oh, but it doesn't need to be from that class. What? I mean, come on guys, a little editing here. Make this a little more clear. But basically what they're saying is um, if you were, let's say you have an option at the beginning, you could be proficient in athletics or in acrobatics. And you hit level four and you say, well, I'm not uh, really using as much deck stuff. I would like to not be proficient in acrobatics anymore, but I want to be proficient in athletics because I'm climbing a lot of walls. In a lot of ways, this is very cool because one of the unfortunate things about the way D&D is at the moment is once you pick a lot of stuff, you're kind of stuck with it. So if the campaign doesn't match what you thought it would be, or it just doesn't fit the character play, um, now there's a way to fix it. So I kind of like this. Um, I can see, I don't know, there's something to be said for a challenge. And you have certain limitations, and how do you creatively work around those limitations? Uh, this is sort of feeds into my second problem I have with these updates. But let's go on. Uh, so now we get into specific classes and what their upgrades are. So Barbarian. Survival Instincts uh, is a second level Barbarian feature which replaces Danger Sense. Now, Danger Sense would normally give you advantage on any sort of uh, deck save that you could see. So, you become proficient in your choice of two of the following skills. Animal Handling, Medicine, Nature, Perception, or Survival. Your proficiency bonus is doubled for any ability check you make that uses either one of those skills. I don't see how this is possibly a good upgrade other than maybe perception, except as a barbarian, you're probably not gonna be very high in um, wisdom. Yeah, in fact, none of these are really that good. Actually, all of these are wisdom, aren't they? So, I don't see how that's a bonus. The, the advantage on deck saves, I mean, that's huge for an up close melee fighter. I. I can't really see many instances where this would be handy, but if you can think of some, leave your comment down below. I'd love to hear it. Level five, instinctive pounce. So it replaces fast movement, fast movement, up your speed. Whoops, dang it. I think 10 feet. Okay. When a creature ends its turn within 15 feet of you, you can use your reaction to move up to half your speed uh, to a space closer to the creature. This movement doesn't provoke opportunity attacks. That's pretty cool. I'm, I like that. I don't know. I don't know if it makes up for the overall speed boost but I can definitely see where this would have a lot of use, especially if you're in a game that, um, like if you're fighting large groups of enemies, uh, fighting different parties and whatnot, 
if it's always like a five on one boss fight, um, I could see it being less useful. However, this is pretty good. Um, the also there's a way to sort of cheat here. This movement doesn't provoke opportunity attacks. So if you're switching enemies, you can get out of the way of one. So let's say you're stuck near a boss and he's got some sort of minion nearby. You could theoretically switch to the minion and not get attacked by the boss. So definitely situational uses. Kind of depends on your style of play. I could see that being handy. Uh, so this next page, I don't know why the weird design feature there, the barbarians before the rest, but this is just a list and it um, lists all the changes that are for each class. Some we can see here enhancement and replacement. So some of the changes replace what's in the player's handbook and some of them just enhance it. So let's let's go on. So a bard. Bard Ah, darn you. Okay. Sorry, folks. Should not have used this, but I have. All right. You get the new spells. First level, cause fear, color spray command. Second, aid, induce relarge, mind spike, mirror image, phantasmal force. Third level, ma mass healing word, slow, tiny servant. Fourth, phantasmal killer. Contact the other plane. Raris telepathic bond. Uh, six. Eh, we got a bunch of other stuff. Anyways, they're all kind of nice spells. I don't know that it really needs it, but um, yeah, okay, it's nice. Now we have some of the nicer features. First level bard feature enhances inspiration. If a creature has a bardic inspiration die from you and casts a spell. The creature can roll that die and add the number rolled to one damage or healing roll of the spell. The party inspiration die is then lost. So that is, to be honest, pretty huge. Now that we can use it for direct damage or direct healing instead of just uh, adding it to saves and checks and whatnot. Uh, Bardic inspiration is pretty OP. Uh, especially if you combine this with, um, what was that new class? The, uh, the, the College of Eloquence, where your inspiration can basically spawn onto another cast, uh, cast member, to another party member. That's a pretty cool feature right there. All right, so spell versatility. First level bard, enhanced spell casting. Whenever you finish a long rest, you can replace one spell you learned from this spell casting feature with another spell from the bard spell list. The new spell must be the same level as the spell you replaced. Now, the only thing that is slightly unclear, are we talking about the original bard spell list plus these new ones over here or just these? Um, that is a little bit unclear to me. I would assume if this stuff just got inserted in a PHB uh, 5.2 or something, then we would um, then it would be all the bard spells. So basically, after a long rest, you can replace one spell. Uh, just remind you, cantrips are spells. Blah, blah, blah. And that's it for the bard. So some of these are, are fairly short updates and some of them are longer. Cleric. A cleric has access to the following features. Cantrip versatility. When you gain a level, you can replace one cantrip you learn from this spellcasting feature with another cantrip from the... Ah, uh, jeez. Sorry, guys. With <laughs> another spell from the cleric list. All right, let me not touch stuff here. Uh, so this is nice. One of the, again, one of the problems in D&D is there are certain cantrips that seem pretty darn cool, 
when you're at lower levels and may be useful, but um, do absolutely nothing at higher levels. I sometimes play a transmutation wizard and I gave him like mold earth, uh, control flame, shape water. They're really not that useful at higher levels. Um, lower levels, yeah, cool. I did it really more for flavor, but that kind of burns a big three spell hole in my five cantrips. All right, so cleric spells. Following spells expand the list. Um, let's see, cause fear, wrathful smite, branding smite, aura of vitality. Um, okay, aura of life, aura of purity, skill empowerment, way of light, and power word heal. Why, uh, why wouldn't clerics have power word heal anyways? That seems like it is a definite oversight. So some of these actually seem like pretty good additions, especially thematically with the cleric. Um, again, uh, okay, again, some of them, well, I guess Smite's not that bad. All right, actually, these all seem pretty good. I, I take that back. Channel Divinity, Harness Divine Power. So at your second level cleric feature, you can expand your use of Channel Divinity to fuel your spells. As a bonus action, you touch your holy symbol, utter a prayer, and regain one expended first level spell slot. Um, uh, yeah, I guess. Well, it is a second level, so at second level, getting back one first level spell slot seems pretty darn cool. Um, I don't know... Seems like it's not going to really scale up, though. But, hey, early on, that's going to be pretty good. Most games don't go that far anyways. Blessed Strikes. Eighth level cleric divine domain feature replaces divine strike or potent spell casting. In battle, you are blessed with divine might. When a creature takes damage from one of your spells or weapon attacks, you can also deal 1d8 radiant damage to that creature. Once you deal this damage, you can't use this feature again until the start of your next turn. This is pretty cool. Um, I don't know, at 8th level, an extra d8, not too bad. Not too bad. Um, it definitely would have been a heck of a lot better at a lower level, but just a little more power up it's not too bad at all i think all right so we'll do druid then i'm gonna cut this one off and i'll do another video for the next so druid a lot of changes to the druid we have the following feature cantrip versatility whenever you gain a level you can replace a cantrip again very cool very functional so you're not stuck with something that doesn't really work well first level um, the new expanded spell list acid splash ceremonial ritual protection from good and evil augury uh, continual flame induce reload and large reduce uh, aura of vitality elemental weapon revivify thunderstep Wall of Sand, Divination, Fire Shield, Cone of Cold, Dawn, Immolation, Level 6, Flesh to Stone, 7th uh, Level, Symbol, 8th, Incendiary Cloud, and 9th, Mass Polymorph, and Power Word Heal. I don't know how I feel about all these. Some of these, um, I don't know. I guess. I mean, if you're playing like a druid healer, uh, it's okay. But to me, this sort of like melds a little bit too much into the cleric realm. Um, when every class is everything, it sort of doesn't matter. Uh, it ruins the creativity, in my opinion. You just do whatever. Oh, I want to be the healer guy. 
Well, what if you want to be a different class and it, you know, and you have limits, but you still want to heal? That makes the game more interesting, in my opinion. But that's just me. Wild Companion, second level Druid feature. So this enhances the wild shape. You gain the ability to summon a spirit that assumes an animal form as an action. You can expend your use of wild shape to cast the Find Familiar spell without material components. When you cast the spell in this way, the familiar is a fey instead of a beast, and the familiar disappears after a number of hours equal to half your druid level. Uh, so yeah, that's pretty cool. I like that one. Um, it does seem like druids would have a lot of animal friends hanging out. I mean, that's kind of ranger territory, but it does make sense. Um, does it have to be a fey? Well, I guess. Uh, I might, as a DM, allow the player to just say, look, you just get a normal beast, and after the number of hours, half of your true level, they just get bored of you and leave, like, you know, a, a normal wild animal would. But, this is pretty cool, um, but again, before you really had sorcerers, wizards, and warlocks were the only people, or people, the only classes that had find familiar. So this sort of, I don't know, do we really need another class to have one? I don't know. I don't know. All right, so. We have gone through the list so far. Hey, for some reason there's no artificers in the A. I don't know. I guess it's so new they didn't have to redo anything yet. But we've gone through barbarians, bards, clerics, and now druids. Uh, so in the next video, less of me jibber-jabbering and more of the upgrades. So. What do you think of this video, guys? If you like it, give it a thumbs up. Let me know in the comments. What do you think of these four different uh, class updates? And uh, what do you think of my analysis? Do you think these updates are good? Do you think they're, I hate to use the word problematic, but maybe they, they're not fully cooked. Uh, so leave your comment below. And please subscribe. I will be back in one day with the next video. Thanks a lot, guys.